Hello, I'm William Meredith Owen, and I'm one of the editors of the Journal of Analytical Psychology. In the first half of this web video, I'm going to give you a brief introduction to our place in the world of psychotherapy and analysis. Then I'll hand you over to my colleague Susanna Wright, who will tell you more about our international outreach, how to engage with us through our annual conferences, how to subscribe, even how to submit a paper, and so on. So, some background. Perhaps the majority of us would most readily associate psychoanalysis with Freud, Vienna, and the turn of the 20th century. But, perhaps surprisingly, the term psychoanalysis was in fact first used by the English Romantic poet Samuel Taylor Coleridge a century earlier, though it was of course Sigmund Freud who first introduced it as a therapeutic discipline. In those early days, his chief ally was Carl Jung, then the rising star of European psychiatry working out of the Bogolzi Hospital near Zurich. Their association was a period of great creativity for both men, but by the outbreak of the First World War, their increasingly divergent attitudes to depth psychology had led to a formal split, with Jung terming his approach analytical psychology to differentiate it from Freud's psychoanalysis. These terms have stuck and are reflected in the titles of the foremost clinical journals of these two respective branches of our profession. The International Journal of Psychoanalysis on the one hand and our own International Journal of Analytical Psychology on the other. Although that original split between Jung and Freud left something of an acrimonious legacy, the work of Michael Fordham, a child psychiatrist who also edited the English translation of the collected works of Jung, opened up possibilities of fruitful dialogue between these two traditions, not least by his focus on the effectiveness of clinical work rather than, say, a preoccupation with philosophical divergences. Fordham was fortunate to find himself in the middle of a very exciting psychoanalytic scene in the London of the 1960s and 1970s. Klein's influence was still strong, Bion and Meltzer, particularly through their study of psychotic rather than neurotic states of mind, were breaking new ground, and of course Winnicott, a close colleague and friend of Fordham's, was in his prime. All these influences fed into the Jungian Training Institute which Fordham founded, the Society of Analytical Psychology, and, in its wake, the journal itself. This readiness to integrate other approaches with a core Jungian orientation together with an ongoing emphasis on clinical work, has remained the hallmark of our journal to this day. We have, of course, become less London-centric over the intervening years, thanks in part to the distinguished succession of US editors and the strength of the contributions we receive from regions as diverse as Russia and Australia. I will now hand over to my fellow editor here in the UK, Susanna Wright, who, together with our invaluable counterpart in the US, Linda Carter, has taken a particular interest in our international outreach. So the history of the journal, as William has been describing it, goes all the way back to 1955, and 2015 will be the journal's 60th birthday. We do still publish clinical papers that relate to the tradition of the London Jungian approach that was forged in those early years, with its influences from baby observation and early child development, as well as from psychoanalysis. But over the last 20 years, our emphasis has changed to look outwards into the wider world. This began in the early 1990s, when the first American editor was appointed, John Beebe. And he, along with the UK editors at the time, set up the first international journal conferences in Maine, in the USA. Our international reach has been nurtured by the succession of international conferences over the last 20 years. The conferences bring together a worldwide community of Jungian scholars and practitioners and they spark an exciting exchange of ideas as well as give opportunities to make collegial connections across national boundaries. Over the years, the journal has travelled the globe with its conferences to Prague, San Francisco, Montreal, Italy, St. Petersburg and Boston amongst other places. Our next conference will be at the end of May this year in Berlin Plenary speakers will include Verena Kast, Andrew Samuels and Jan Wiener. We've already had scores of bookings, so if you're interested in coming along, why not ask our managing editor for a copy of the publicity brochure and programme. In 2015, we hope to hold a conference in Latin America, possibly in Rio de Janeiro. Maybe it's partly because of these conference gatherings, 
but the authors who contributed papers to the journal in 2013 were from as far afield as Australia, Norway, Japan and Russia. So it's fitting that our publishers, Wiley, provide electronic access to universities and libraries around the world. In 2012, there were 3,800 institutions worldwide that subscribed for access to the journal. And over 5,000 institutions in developing countries have access at low or no cost through philanthropic initiatives. So authors who publish in the journal can significantly influence the development of contemporary Jungian thought. We publish papers with philosophical, cultural and historical relevance to Jung, but that traditional emphasis on clinical work remains the backbone of the journal. Most of all, we're interested in publishing papers that describe the work of Jungian analysts and psychotherapists in their consulting rooms, wherever they are. We're interested in how clinicians are thinking about their patients and their work, and how they're linking their ideas back to the rich body of professional experience that this journal represents. This year we've joined the digital revolution and become one of the 550 journals using the Scholar One system for submitting papers for publication. If you'd like to find out about this or other aspects of the life of the journal, including the Berlin Conference, you can follow us on Twitter and pick up regular news bulletins. If you want to know more, please do email our managing editor at journal.jap at btconnect.com and get a copy of our subscription leaflet or the conference website address. Thank you.